uh, once after a talk, a woman came up to me, and many people were waiting to talk, and she waited, and then she came, and she was very shy, and she said, um, do you ever have problems with pterodactyls? And I, <laughs> no, said very nicely that no, I never had had a problem. Well, it wasn't a week until I had a tremendous problem <laughs> with one. Uh, and, you know, I realized that, oh, this is what this woman was talking about. And, uh, you know, so in a way, she empowered my unconscious to lead me in to that place. And so stifling discussion about psychedelics is the most detrimental thing that can be done. I mean, this really, we really need to tear the lid off this. If not to do it, at least to talk about it. And uh, uh, I think that will then create the climate where more serious things can be done. Further back. What was your problem with the pterodactyl? <laughs> what was my problem with the pterodactyl? Someone fishing for a story. <laughs> Well, I, um, I had uh, taken some mushrooms, and I was waiting for them to come on, and uh, it was about the 50-minute mark, and, uh, and it was beginning to come on, and its typical form of presentation is it has this kind of octopoid or silk scarf-like quality where it just falls upon you as though from the ceiling and then you're enveloped in it and, and you mustn't struggle, you must just observe. And I was sort of to that place with it and uh, suddenly there was uh, a feeling of, of retraction and like a cold air was how I described it to myself. And the dog next door who had never before howled in fact, I didn't know there was a dog next door, <laughs> suddenly howled. And this feeling of coldness and retraction and the howling dog, and I sort of sat up and said, hmm, that's funny. And at that moment, the cross beam, which was a few feet above my head, gave a groan <laughs> as with the sound of leathery wings, <laughs> something settled onto, apparently onto the roof of my house. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I was completely flabbergasted <laughs> to the point where I was not even alarmed. It was more like, come on, you know? And so I just sat with it for about 15 seconds, and then I... I I uh, directed my attention through the roof at whatever was there and uh, said something which was, seemed odd to me to say. I said, uh, be gone. Can't you see that I am in conversation with an elder? And I had never ever before actually <laughs> referred to the mushroom as an elder. This thing just sort of came out of my mouth. And there was a kind of a standoff, a feeling of standoff, and then the beam groaned and I heard the beat of leathery wings and this thing went away. And uh, <laughs> later I saw this woman again, the one who had asked the question, and I said, I didn't understand what you meant about the pterodactyls, but uh, then I had this experience. And I said, my impression was that they're very stupid. And she said, yes, they're very stupid, but when the doorway is opening, they come and stand around. And, and that's exactly what it was. Okay, so then you turn this over to a straight therapist or something, and they, and they say, you know, this is clearly an antediluvian projection from the collective. Well, I don't know. Uh, it does seem as though there are forces and powers which haunt these other realms where one is much wiser to simply uh, go with tradition 
and uh, find out, you know, what's going on. There are apparently dumb spirits or dumb forces which hang around with which you must deal sternly. 